You're watching the news on Bahrain International. I'm Mohammed Shaban. Good evening. In the presence of His Highness Sheikh Sultan al-Din bin Mohammed bin Salman al-Khalifa, His Highness Sheikh Nadir bin Mohammed bin Salman al-Khalifa, His Highness Sheikh Hashim bin Mohammed bin Salman al-Khalifa, and His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Ali bin Isa al-Khalifa, the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club organized the seventh race, which consisted of eight rounds and was held on the cups of Al-Hawaj Company, the cup of Ibrahim bin Sa'ad al-Rumehi, and the Wasmiya Cup for Arabian Horses at the club's racetrack in Arafa area in Sakhir. The event was also attended by representatives of the sponsors of the race and the ambassador of France to the kingdom. At the end of the race, the winners were crowned with the executive director of the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club, Sheikh Salman bin Rashid Al Khalifa, presenting the Al Wasmiya Cup to the winner, Yusuf Tahar, while the assistant of the head of the court of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Mr. Hamad bin Ibrahim Al Rumehi, and his two sons, Ibrahim and Abdul Aziz, presented the Ibrahim bin Sa'ad Al Rumehi Cup to His Highness Sheikh Sultan al Din bin Mohammed bin Salman Al Khalifa. Then the representatives of the Al Hawaj family presented the Hawaj Cup for the seventh round to the winner, James Naylor, and the Hawaj Cup for the eighth round to His Highness Sheikh Sultan al Din bin Mohammed bin Salman Al Khalifa. The Supreme Council for Health President, head of the National Task Force for Combating COVID-19, Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al-Khalifa, paid tribute to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al-Khalifa, praising his initiatives to take the vaccine and call for compliance with all mandatory precautionary measures and protocols which enable the Kingdom of Bahrain to curb the pandemic. He extended thanks to His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al-Khalifa for their support to frontliners and volunteers who spared no effort to achieve goals and enable the Kingdom of Bahrain to regain its normal pace of life. He praised His Majesty the King's support to the national efforts led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister with determination and competence, describing the royal support as a catalyst to attain the goals and overcome the pandemic. The SCH President praised His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister's visit to the Bahrain International Exhibition and Convention Center, where the national vaccination campaign was officially launched, hailing the drive as a new phase in combating COVID-19. Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa urged all citizens and residents to contribute act to the national campaign and follow into the steps of His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister who took the vaccine. He praised the sweeping participation of citizens and residents in the campaign, which reflected their awareness and responsibility and keenness on their safety and protection of their families and community, lauding the efforts exerted by the Ministry of Health. Bahrain has welcomed the implementation of the Riyadh Agreement as it is by the Yemeni parties, the legitimate government and the Southern Transitional Council as an important step to strengthen and unify Yemeni efforts to confront the Iran-support Houthi militias and achieve the aspirations of the brotherly Yemeni people for security, peace and stability. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs commended in this regard the sincere efforts made by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia under the directives of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud and those of Crown Prince, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Defense, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed Ahmed bin Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud and their concern and interest in the security, stability and prosperity of brotherly Yemen. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs hailed the formation of a government of political competencies that includes all Yemen's social components to put an end to military arrangements, appreciating the Yemeni party's keenness on the supreme interests of the Republic of Yemen and their endeavors to unify efforts to restore Yemeni legitimacy and achieve peace and stability in all parts of brotherly Yemen. The Minister of Labor and Social Development, Jamil bin Mohammed Ali Hamidan, participated in the 40th meeting of the Council of Arab Ministers of Social Affairs through visual communication technology. Chaired by the UAE Minister of Community Development, Hamidan stressed the Kingdom of Bahrain's keenness to support joint Arab actions, affirming its support to Arab countries and implementing their social and development projects and programs in line with the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals and those that meet and support social and humanitarian efforts to confront the corona pandemic COVID-19, stressing the importance of unifying efforts to combat the virus and bring Arab societies to safety and security. The minister highlighted Bahrain's efforts and initiatives in the field of implementing the Sustainable Development Goals, which are reflected in the social welfare programs and the provision of decent living for different groups and segments of society. He also referred to the strenuous efforts made by the esteemed government in order to implement precautionary and preventative measures to ensure the health and safety of the society. The Shura Council has condemned broadcasts by the Qatari Al Jazeera channel, saying that it lacked credibility and that it has been using an approach to sow chaos, terrorism and violence. The Human Rights Committee of the Shura said that Al Jazeera injects its poison from a de democratically sterile country and it must learn how to initiate and observe democratic practices. In a statement, the committee said that Al Jazeera's broadcasts are an extension of the attacks by the Qatari authorities on Bahraini fishermen and their livelihoods that also included further restrictions on them and arresting them in Bahrain's territorial waters. In some cases, 
cases, the Qatari authorities used live ammunition against the Bahraini fishermen, resulting in fatalities and injuries. Such attacks, constraints, arrests and shootings are a blatant violation of the sea conventions approved by the United Nations and a flagrant abuse of the principles of good neighborliness, according to the statement. At the same time, the Qatari government has been violating and extended periods of time the rights of thousands of migrant workers, not providing them with adequate ac accommodation in a clear abuse of the principles of human rights. This has prompted the International Labour Organization to intervene on numerous occasions to call on the Qatari government to abide by the agreements that it was signed with regards to the foreign workers. The Shura Committee also affirmed that Bahrain established the principles of democracy through its constitutional institutions and guaranteed all individuals equality and the right to exercise all their constitutionally guaranteed rights. The Kingdom also guaranteed the principles of criminal justice and fair trial principles in accordance with international standards based on the rule of law, ensuring security and civil peace, exercising rights according to the law, and promulgating advanced criminal justice laws. The statement added that Bahrain's advanced achievements and outstanding accomplishments in the humanitarian, legal and justice fields have obviously wounded the envious in the country that is devoid of the simplest manifestations of democracy and of the participation in public affairs management by representatives of the people's will. The Shura Committee affirmed its pride of the solidarity of its people with the leader of the nation's progress, His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, and that the Kingdom of Bahrain will keep moving forward, consolidating democratic practices based on robust foundations for rights and freedoms. The chairman of the Human Rights Committee at the Council of Representatives, MP Ammar al Bennai, has affirmed that the Qatari regime's violations and continuous disregard for the human rights principles have covered all members of the Qatari society without exception. al Bennai indicated that since the outbreak of the novel coronavirus, COVID-19, expatriate workers and many human rights organizations have complained of the violations, violence and arbitrariness of the Qatari regime against expatriate workers as many Qatari companies stopped paying their low salaries, paying no heed to their difficult financial and family conditions as well as their inability to secure their daily needs. He added that the dehumanized practices against expatriate workers have exposed the lies of the Qatari regime in front of the international community and human rights organizations and proved the extent to which companies under government cover are exploiting the issue of migrant workers in the ugliest ways, overriding all international labor agreements and treaties, human rights principles and transgressing the dignity and rights of foreign workers without any supervision or control over employers in Qatar. al Benai pointed out that the Qatari regime spends billions of dollars on building foreign military bases on its land, supporting some of its allied internationally sanctioned countries to save their economies and supporting terrorists and mercenary groups around the world, as well as on destroying Arab countries, but they cannot pay the very low wages of foreign workers. The Qatari regime exercises tyranny on expatriate workers in order to silence them and prevent them from exposing the human rights violations against them. He said, adding that despite the repeated calls of international human rights organizations to act immediately and address the situation, no action has been taken in this regard. al Benai pointed out that the Qatari regime's violations also covered the Qatari citizens and the deep-rooted tribes in addition to the members of the ruling family, stressing that human rights respect do not exist in Qatar except in the political speeches and the lies of the Al Jazeera satellite channel. He indicated that the human rights violations, the torture and forcible kidnapping of the members of the opposition and tribesmen who reject Qatar's policies that have linked its name to supporting terrorism and mercenary groups and made it an ally to terror sponsor states that deny human rights have uncovered the extent of the Qatari regime's tyranny and oppression against its people, citing the repeated arrest of the ruling family members who reject Qatar's hostile policies against GCC countries and criticize the Qatari government. He added that the Qatari forces also fired at Bahraini fishermen, injuring them, destroying their boats and making them lose their livelihood and the source of income for their families in breach of the rights to life, personal safety, the rights to work and freedom of movement within the territorial borders of the Kingdom of Bahrain, which are guaranteed by the International Human Rights Covenants. The General Directorate of Traffic has extended thanks and appreciation to the citizens and residents for representing the civilized side of Bahrain by following traffic rules during the Kingdom celebrations of its national days. The General Directorate of Traffic also highlighted the cooperation of road users and their contributions to the success of the traffic plans. In cooperation with the police directorates, the directorate deployed traffic patrols on main roads and celebration sites to avoid traffic jams and wrong practices. Some traffic violations were registered, including stunt practices in which the required steps were taken. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of corona cases reached 1,531 active cases with 157 new recoveries and 140 registered new cases. 76 of the new registered cases were expatriates, 52 were contacts of active cases and 12 were travel-related. The Ministry urges everyone to adhere to the rules and avoid public spaces when possible. 